Hello guys, today we are playing a 3v3 match on a beautiful map Lebanon in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.2. We are picking random, but I see people are picking Isengard and Mordor, but it's okay. And this time we will get to play the Mordor faction. Okay. The age of men is over. Oh, holy moly. Oh, 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 maybe Mumbaki can charge. Look, 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 look. Oh, 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 oh my god. Lords. Oh, Gandalf. <laughs> Come on, Muma kill. What will the Muma kill do? Mega 360. Kill Lurts and Saruman. Scream. Vagonda! Miss Lurts and Saruman. Type what you think in the comments section down below. The age of the Orc has come. We have double Mordor and Rohan combination. Not the best combination in the universe, but I think it's workable. It's doable. And it's normally when you play Mordor in a 3v3 match, Mordor is like a sporty faction, which provides lots of leadership and utility to the allies. But as we have double Mordor, we need to be the carry of this game. And the good thing about the patch 2.22 is, in this specific example, normally when you play a 3v3 or 4v4 match in BFME 1, uh, you don't have a starting unit. But we have we made sure that every single time, in every single format, if it's 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, Every single faction is now starting units, which is like an indirect path to the Isengard faction because unlike the factions like Mordor with Gollum and Gondor and Rohan with Pippin and Merry, Isengard doesn't have a cheap hero and you can't even capture your settlements outside, which is like a very bad thing for the Isengard faction, but now in the patch 2.22 that's fixed. Okay, the plan is we're gonna creep. And I'm gonna actually straight up recruit um, Muma Kills and I will ask my ally actually to make Witch King. So we can have leadership for the Muma Kills. With the Eye of Sauron, that always stacks, by the way. We can make the Muma Kills a bit more tanky because damage is not a problem for the Muma Kills as they one shot everything they touch. With the charge attack, they can deal literally through damage and there is no force. Not even Gandalf can withstand this power, you know? Okay, he's saying, okay, that's good. So from creeping, we will get also lots of money, which will help us to fill up the base a bit faster. And then we can reach the power spike of getting Muma kills upon the field way, way sooner. And that's the plan. And we are also building the slaughterhouses as the main resource building for the Mordor faction, because slaughterhouses are giving us the food bonus, making our monsters like trolls, drummer trolls, and also Muma kills way cheaper. Without them, we would have to pay way more resources, but I forgot, <laughs> Mume, the food bonus doesn't apply on the Mume kills anymore, because Mume kills got plenty of buffs in the patch 2.22 and they were just too cheap. So they were like S tier units with almost no downsides. The only problem with the Mume kills is they are, you know, they are very squishy against fire arrows and they are also very immobile. They are moving very slowly, but once they get into, <laughs> once they get to charge, uh, be careful. If they step on you, you are gone. Okay, boys, so we are looking good, we are looking strong, we have double lamb mill outside. Money should not be a problem, but we need to pay 2,000 for each Muma kill we want to recruit. So we cannot spam them, especially not early on, but once the slaughterhouses inside the camp are going to be level 2, we should be in a good spot. We're also going to build up the Haradrim Palace to make it just like in the films, because the Haradrims, they belong on top of the Muma kills. Without the Haradrims, Muma kills, they feel like they're not very, you know, <laughs> completed. I think that's what I'm looking for. Okay, we are, we are like, you know, in a good spot. Very good spot. The first Mumma is gonna join the battlefield very soon. And then we are on the roll. Can we get the last hit? I think we got the last hit. We have almost like a le level 4. We also stole the money, dude. That's my first multiplayer game, by the way, guys, since a long time. I think the last time I took such a break from BFME was like 2-3 years ago. And I'm happy to be back. I mean, as an ap apology, uh, because I wasn't able to create content for the, for you guys to watch on the YouTube channel. Um, I have a son now, you know what I'm saying? And I also gotta be there for him, to train him to become the next generation BFME streamer and gamer. And there are obviously hopes from my side, you know what I'm saying? I really hope secretly that we will hopefully be getting another BFME game, official BFME game. Uh, because the thing is, the, the power of the rank like the Rings of Power, the series on Amazon Prime is going to be released very soon in September 2022, which is going to be obviously like two months from now. And hopefully this will create lots of hype about Lord of the Rings. 
and maybe the game developers are gonna kind of decide to make another RTS game, which would be a dream. Let's be honest, I would be so happy about the situation, but I mean, obviously, unfortunately, making RTS games in 2022, <laughs> not the best decision, maybe, because it requires lots of time, money. And also the question is, how many people are actually interested in RTS games in 2022, you know? That's the main question. I think the game developing country, uh, companies, they are more into this mobile gaming because first of all, they are made way faster. And then on top of that, we have this microtransactions and then they can grow rich. The thing about RTS games is if you sell them one single time, you can't make money afterwards from the people who already purchased it. You know what I mean? I think that's the main reason why there are no, there is no focus on this RTS genre, you know, unfortunately. But we gotta work with what we got, and for that reason, we are trying our best to improve the BFME one as much as we potentially can. Unfortunately, most of the stuff we want to implement, we want to change, we want to improve is not possible because of the old engine. At the end of the day, it's a video game from 2004, you know, it's not a new video game. And yeah, we have limitations, unfortunately, we gotta work with, we are investing lots of time into making it as fun and also as balanced as we potentially can. Okay, we also need to get Troll Cage for the Mooma Kill action. Unfortunately, our Rohan ally is actually going for Rohirrim, which is not a bad choice, don't get me wrong, but if you have double Mordor ally, you actually need to recruit infantry. Because if you don't know, the, the Drummer Trolls, they don't give leadership to the cavalry, only infantry and monsters. So, a drama troll can't give leadership to the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers, that's not possible. Okay, it's time to rock and roll, baby girl. It's time to rock and roll. We need to work together as a team. My ally has now the Witch King, which means we have 50% more dam damage and armor for the Mooma kills. They are gonna be a bit more tanky now. And you know, hopefully with 3 Mooma kills, we can make something happen. We need to wait, we need to wait until they all arrive. So when you have like more than two, it's going to be hard for the, for the opening player to actually, you know, take them down individually. Because when you fight against Mooma Kills, you want to take them down at the same time before they can ever reach out to you. But if you have three of them, you know, running you down, <laughs> it's going to be harder than you expect. Okay. The problem is he has rangers inside the Citadel. Look them shooting, boys. And there is a Nazgul coming too. <laughs> Dude. The problem is, the thing is, you can... If you want to, target the Nazgul with the Haradrims on top of your Mooma kill, but you can't target them by selecting your Mooma kill. You can't click on the Nazgul, that's not possible. Once everything around the, around the outpost has been destroyed, then the Haradrims are gonna automatically target whatever is close to them, in this case the Nazgul, but until this moment we cannot target them. But when we would have a Nazgul or a Witch King we control, and we select the Mooma kills and the Nazgul at the same time, then we have the chance to right click on the enemy Nazgul, and that automatically causes the Haradrims on top of our Mooma Kills directly attacking the Nazgul. But as we have no Nazgul under our control, we can't. Unfortunately, my ally actually lost the Witch King. That's really bad. That's really, really, really bad. Oh, P <laughs> tiny troll, wanna fight against my Mooma Kill? Are you out of your mind? This is not a battle of mindless trolls. These are Mooma Kills. They are tall, they are big, and they are also hitting like a truck. Okay, I wanna show you guys the second we destroy the last building. I mean, what is Mordor doing? He's sending Drummer Troll. <laughs> you wanna, you know, imagine a show match between a Drummer Troll who is like a sportive unit of the Middle Earth faction, of the Mordor faction, against the Mooma Kill, the power. Like, the unit which was literally made for destruction purposes only. But, but you see, now the Haradrims are automatically focusing and targeting the Nazgul, and the Mooma Kill is surprisingly tanky against flying heroes. Like, legitimately said, the only weakness of the Mooma Kills is actually Fire Arrows. So if you have no Fire Arrows or any Archer heroes like Faramir with the Morning Arrow or Legolas with high DPS, then you cannot burst them down that fast. And the Nazgul has been slain. Unfortunately, we lost two of the Mooma Kills, but it's okay. We will get more of them on the field. And the good thing is, once the Mooma Kill pen is level 3, every Mooma Kill we're gonna recruit from this point on will be automatically level 2, which means higher resistances and also higher damage. But that is a Isengard, and we gotta be careful because the second the Isengard gets Freezing Rain, uh, all the leadership bonuses from the Moro faction are gonna be negated. Like in a 2v2 or especially 3v3 situation, the biggest counter to the Moro faction is definitely Isengard. 
and the longer the game goes on the more effective the freezing rain is gonna become because all Mordor has to offer is actually insane amount of leadership bonuses but Mordor doesn't have really strong infantry units you have only orcs and orc archers and also haradrims but you cannot even upgrade them with heavy armor or forge plates they are on you can only make them stronger with leadership which again Isengard can easily counter by pressing one single button the freezing rain okay okay I mean we gotta play it slow I don't want to go forward with like two more kills we have seen the army of Isengard so it's looking pretty rough to me <laughs> hopefully we can make it happen I don't know what's going on on the other side my ally is building normal Rohirrim but again also normal Rohirrim are gonna be countered um say it by the by the pikemen the problem here is the enemy has like a better team composition they have like what Gondor Mordor and Isengard if you have Mordor and Isengard combined remember what Saruman was saying in the, in the films who now has the strength to face against the force of Isengard and Mordor and the union of the two towers I mean we don't have the power yet but you know me I'm always down for some challenges so if it would be an easy matchup you know Oh, Gandalf, do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Okay, so we have Witch King now, three Muma kills, but I think they want to collapse on us. That's why I was thinking that it's the best choice if Rohan is attacking a different person at the same time. The good thing about the Rohirrim is they are quite mobile. They have the chance of hitting and running away. You see multiple pikemen, but I, I'm down. I'm done fighting this, even though I think it's an unfavorable fight. And the other downside from the Mumakis is you have not the chance to run away. My ally is just inting his Nazgûls now. You can really not fly into this big army with your Nazgûls, you know? That's not possible. You can't even fear them when there is Saruman around with fear resistance. There is Lords around, they have Drummer Trolls, they have insane leadership with the Witch King. Gandalf can also support them even with more leadership. We need to kind of beat them in, in a small choke point, you know what I'm saying? But he's smart, like he's kind of leaving a big chunk of our army downside, he can also shoot up. We have no choice but engaging, again running away is not an option. And also Nazgul is there, I want to kill this <laughs> kill this Gandalf, but I think we can't. I I'm going ham, I'm going ham. Maybe I can fear them, the, the Lourdes and Saruman are not close to the combos, so maybe we can fear them actually with the, with the Screech, let's try. Nice, we did it. It's good. Now they can't participate in the fight at least for the 10 seconds, but I think uh, we are still in a bad spot. <laughs> like, our last Momo kill is gonna be taken down very soon as well. Uh, very, very unfortunate. But I think we dealt great amount of damage to the Isengard army though. I think that's gonna slow him down at least for now. Which will buy us enough time to actually um, keep recruiting more Momo kills. The more b levels the Momo kill pen has, the faster the production speed is going to become. So we will be able to produce them way faster. And the good thing is, our ally at the very same time is actually targeting the Isengard player. That's very good. That's going to buy us so much more time and slow him down. Especially the Uruk pit. If, when you lose the level to Uruk... <laughs> you know, talking about losing, which king has been slain. But, but it's okay. It's okay. We can cover this land too. No problemo. Okay, my ally actually dealt tremendous amount of damage to the Isengard faction, that's good. Now he gotta rebuild the Uruk pit, and then he will have only a Uruk pit level 1 with like way longer productions, production um, speed. And that's gonna buy us time, because the main threat and the main opponent and enemy in this situation for us is definitely the Isengard. Gondor has not many options, we have destroyed the outpost and he had the archer range at the outpost, so he has not many units on the field. He has only Gandalf, but the problem is the Gandalf can't do much against Mumai kills. Like his spells won't hurt the Mumai kills that much, and he gotta be careful because the second I trample the Gandalf with my Mumai kill, it's over for him, you know? Mumai kills are OP on here on 2.22. Yeah, sure. I mean. We didn't change too much about the Mumu Kills though. What we did for the Mumu Kills is the old animation. Like when you played Bifumi for the first time before patching anything on the patch 1.00, and uh, when you would hurt the Mumu Kills with fire arrows, they would actually go crazy. People underestimate the Mumu Kills. They always, they always did. Mumu Kills, again, their main weakness is fire. And before they change 
um, the meat so they can char you know, they can go crazy again when they get fire shotted um, they would just die like flies you know and it was just not worth the investment at the end of the day we need to understand that for every single movement we want to recruit we gotta pay 2000 and also lots of command points so they they are supposed to be strong they are actually more expensive than most of the heroes too you know you go for another Nazgul, we have like three Mumakis, lots of trolls, but the problem is the freezing rain. I mean, you can see it's raining day, and that means we have no leadership bonuses. Uh, at least not for the units we had on the field when the rain was activated. If you don't know, if you're opening using rain, it only affects your current army. So the army you recruit after the rain has been used will have still leadership bonuses. Oh boy. I messed up the charge attack, dude. I really messed it up, but maybe the Mumakil gonna go crazy. Go crazy, Mumakil, go crazy. Oh, oh, not this way. The Mumakil doesn't know what to do. Now we have a problem, Houston. Houston, we got a problem. Because <laughs> there are also lots of rangers. They have also insane amount of leadership with Witch King, Eye of Sauron, and Drummer Trolls. Only from the Moro faction, the Isengard player gets 150% more damage. But he's not microing his combos very well. You want to move around. When you see a Mumakil kill charging you down, you want to abuse the fact that they are slow. Oh my. <laughs> oh, but Rohan is coming. Mordor calls for it, and Rohan will answer. Master the Rohirrim. Save us, Rohan. Save us. And that's the problem with the, with the Rangers. They are very strong when it comes to DPS, you know. Like, ditching out damage, that's their specialty. Nothing. No archer in the universe of the Middle-earth can even come close to the damage output in the speed of the ranges, but they are very squishy. Like every unit in here has like a downside and an upside. Oh, holy moly. Dude, we are collecting power points left and right. What's a beautiful trample, am I right or not? Now he's charging. Dude, guys, if you like Mumu Kills, I think you gotta love this game. And if you do, please don't forget to leave a like. I mean, it, it costs you nothing but three seconds of your life and it really helps quite a lot. You know, for the YouTube algorithm, I really appreciate it in advance. Thank you very much. And we are kind of holding ourselves. To be honest, once I've seen the Isengard army, the big Isengard army with the rangers around them, I was like, okay, this game is over. Because if we lose this area, uh, the next step is going to be one of the one of the camps, and that will defeat either me or one of my allies. And in a three v three matchup. Turning it into a 2v3 situation is going to be almost, almost GG. Witch King is back in the business. That's good. I can also use the industry on my ally. On my Rohan ally. I mean, that's also a change from the patch 2.22. Like, we wanted to make, like, more synergy between the factions. Like, normally you can only use industry on your Isengard or Mordor ally to affect only and exclusively slaughterhouses or furnaces. But in the patch 2.22, you can affect also blacksmiths from Gondor and farms from Gondor and Rohan. So you can always help your ally when he needs help. Okay, I want to actually move up, move down a bit. Um, I think we cannot hold this for a long time. Let's use this here on the farms. Look at them. Pew! Look them glowing, shining bright like a diamond. You love to see it. With almost seven power points in the bank. Three Mumma kills, running it down. We need only 13 and a half power points for the for the mighty ancient demon. And obviously, here in this map, the no one has a castle, and everyone has a camp. And Balrog is definitely able to defeat, uh, you know, to destroy one camp by himself out easily. <laughs> I couldn't click on the I couldn't click on the outputs, dude. I was like trying to press C, you know, C for for uh, outpost, like that's the shortcut when you play English. Um, and I clicked C after cl selecting an Asgul, which I didn't want to, which activates their Screech ability. Okay, so we got a club clubs now. Uh, I think the moment kill, I need to go now ham. We have also a big Rohirrim force behind. I, I entered this, I should have been a bit more patient. I play, by the way, really, really bad in this game, guys. My micro is horrible. Look, look, the, 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 you see the damage from rangers, dude, how am I supposed to reach out to them? How can I reach out to them? <laughs> dude, I can't do anything about this situation, my Mumma kids are falling. Then Rohan has to commit. Rohan has to commit now. I can use darkness too, no problemo. Oh, 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 maybe Mumma can charge. Look, 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 
Look, watch this moment kill. Please. Look, 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 look. Oh, what happened? Why are you slowing down like this, dude? Oh my goodness, man. Go, go, Mumba kill. Go, 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 go. I have charge attack on cooldown. Like, everything is one-shotting my Mumba kill. Literally. One is coming. I see Cloud Break. I don't know from who this Cloud Break is, actually. I can tell. Oh, it's from the opponent Gondo play, I think. Yeah, because the Rohirrim are not able to move for whatever reason. Okay, now they are moving. That's good. All right. Um, if you don't know, like you need fear resistant, right, for uh, for the cloud break to counter that. But as the cloud, as the freezing rain is shutting down all the leadership bonuses, it also shuts down the the fear effect, the fear resistant you get. So in a two v two situation, if you're Isengard, if you play Gondor or Rohan and your ally is Isengard, if you time it not, uh, right, if your ally using the freezing rain and you use right after the cloud break, you can still stun them. So imagine the situation: the opponent team losing all their uh, bonuses and on top of that you even stand them you know it's like a win-win situation okay i mean we are holding ourselves but for now we were actually or until now we were actually in a very defensive situation i was really hoping that rohan can do some stuff while this is happening so every single one of us even the gondor player from the opening team are using immobile units infantry I'm using monsters, my ally Mordor is using monsters and flying heroes, but nobody is using cavalry beside our Rohan ally. He has the chance to do stuff while this stuff is happening. So if you see the opening team, Gondor and also Isengard, and even Mordor, marching out together to one single location, that gives you the signal, okay, you know what, I can just go ham now and in, in destroy, uh, destroy their camps. That's what he's supposed to do, you know? We can kill this, no problem, lords. Oh, Gandalf. <laughs> My ally is Mumba kill. Dude, this is a Mumba kill party now. I will rush one base. Finally, David. Come on, David. I trust you on that one. You can do this. Look, my Nazgûls. Three Nazgûls to rule them all. That's epic, dude. Nice. Oh, but... Can I kill him? I want to kill him and get away if I can. They have no armor. Uh, they have no upgrades yet. This combos, even without upgrades, look how much damage they are able to deal to me because of the leadership they got. Okay. Nice. We are in a good spot. We are only six power points away. <laughs> this game is absolute clown fiesta, by the way, guys. I mean, let's be let's be honest. I was actually not doing anything else but Mumba kills and Nazgûls, and I, it, you know, at some point of the game, I wanted to also recruit a couple of these trolls, but I realized, okay, it's not worth it. I will lose one of the Nazgûls, but it's not a big deal because if you don't know, reviving Nazgûls in, Nazgûl in this game, even the Witch King is for free, but it costs you lots of time. We have like two alternatives, right? We have a Nazgûl and a Witch King still alive, so we should be in a good spot. But holy moly, this range is though. They're hitting so hard against Nazgûl. And the Nazgûl is taking so much structural damage too, from the level 3 archer range in this couple of towers, and he's gonna fall down. Hopefully I won't lose the Witch King. I wanna charge. Can I charge? It's on cooldown. Oh, man. Oh, man. My Witch King is also gonna die, right? Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. Okay, we are in a good spot. At least he's doing some stuff at the same time. So we can actually support him with the Eye of Sauron. And recruit catapults for the worst case scenario. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look. The combos without fear resistant, without level 3, they are very vulnerable. Destroy everything. I think yes, the Like at this point, just commit. Even if there is a Nazgul trying to defend, you can just commit, keep committing, and destroy this Mordor camp. Destroying this Mordor camp means the Mordor player will be defeated. So if he doesn't leave before the last structure falls, he will automatically be defeated, and all his units remaining on the field are gonna be demolished and destroyed. But if you leave before your structure falls, you can give the remaining units what you have on the field to your ally. So if you play in a tournament game in a 2v2 situation and you are about to lose your castle or camp or outpost, your last camp or castle or outpost, you can leave the game just before this happens and give you all your re remaining money, resources, command points, and even your army to your, op to your ally, you know? So he has still a chance of winning, but he didn't. He didn't leave the game, he got defeated, and Rangel has been defeated too. Now it's gonna turn into a 3v1 situation. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen 
The Mumakias are going to war, the men of the east against the men of the west. Who now is the strength? <laughs> Look, this is so crazy. Like, tell me if it's not Fiesta, boys. We see Mumakias running wild from one side to the other side all the time. I messed up the charge attack. Oh. Saruman is like fleet footwork. Like, can touch this. Did, 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 did. Let's use cup. Let's use darkness. Darkness. Come on, Mumma Kill. I trust you. No, Mumma Kill. You messed it up. You're not a good one. Dude, look. <laughs> we have like crazy Mumma Kill production. I don't even know what is going on. I'm actually playing it so lazy and so extremely bad. But the Mumma Kills are doing the job for me. And I think we still killed a bunch of units. There is Legolas who got crippled down. I think he's not gonna make it out alive. There is a <laughs> Isengard army with Lord's leadership and Saruman leadership. They are very, very beefy and super strong. But again, it's a 3v1 situation. It's a matter of time. They have no chance. Like, look the Rohan army too. They have like a bunch of level 10 Rohirrim. They are very strong. And without the assistance of the Gondor and Mordor, the Isengard is quite limited in the terms of the possibilities, right? What can Isengard do? We have only two heroes, couple of combos. In one single spellbook against three spellbooks. Like, obviously, in RTS games, especially in this game PFME 1, the heroes, levels, and also power points are essential. You know, like, that's why you need to be, play aggressive. And you you see me playing free for all games, guys. You will always see me participating in many, many fights. There is a specific reason for that. Because I wanna be the one who is getting all the power points unlocked first. Because if I just camp it out, if I play too passive and if I don't participate in those fights, I will just fall behind super fast and later on my opponent or my opponents have the chance to destroy me completely, you know, by using their power points exclusively. That's why you gotta fight, 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 fight until you are able to get all your power points. Oh my goodness, what a juicy, beautiful trample. And we are, <laughs> they are getting trampled by Rohirrim and right after from the, oh, look Saruman, though, is popping off. But we have the Nazgûs. Kill them. I mean, we can just target everything on, on, on Saruman. He's using Fireball too. But I, but it's a matter of time. We have like two power points. We need for the for the Baldrog. I hope we get it. We get it unlocked so I can summon him. But I, it might be close. Oh, Lords! If I kill Lords, oh man! If I kill if I kill Lords there, you know, I will get the power points because I need less than a one, less than one now. Oh my goodness. Dude, I enjoy this game. Like, when I play only once, I'm tryharding, you know what I'm saying? Because it's about, you know, you and your opponent. In a 2v2 situation, it's also similar, because it relies so much on you. But in a 3v3 situation, for me, it's just Fiesta. You know, Fiesta, pure entertainment. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We couldn't make it. GG well played. I hope, you, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck, and as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.